video is entitled The Four Different Types of Heart Palpitations. All heart palpitations can be divided into one of four different categories and if you know this then it makes it much easier for you and for your doctor to work out what your heart palpitations are due to. Okay, let me just talk you through this. Heart palpitations can be an extremely worrying and distressing symptom, especially if they start occurring in someone who has never experienced them before. Not only can they be extremely uncomfortable, uh, but they can also generate a huge amount of fear for the patient because the poor patient doesn't know what they mean. Often, when someone gets heart palpitations and after they've settled, people go on Google and they'll type in heart palpitations and Google will churn out a huge list of really horrible sounding um, uh, different rhythm disturbances uh, which uh, add to a patient's fear. So you'll see things like non-sustained VT, VT, SVT, AF, atrial flutter, atrial tachycardia, ectopics, all this kind of stuff. Um, and then that causes even more anxiety. Then the patient goes to the doctor and the doctor says, well, let's do a monitor because you'll only work out what your heart palpitations are due to if you have a monitor which documents them. The patient then waits several days, weeks to have this monitor. And sometimes and often when the patient gets the monitor, they don't get the heart palpitations. And then they return the monitor and then they start getting their palpitations. And this generates a huge amount of anxiety because no one has actually managed to pick up what they're getting. And um, at some point, even the poor patient gets confused as to whether are they really heart palpitations? Is it my anxiety? What's going on? So is there an easy way for a person uh, <clears throat> to try and work out why they, what their heart palpitations are due to? Um, even without a monitor. And so I thought I'd do a little video uh, to try and make it easier uh, because if you can define your heart palpitations just by feeling them, uh, then it makes it much easier for you uh, to describe them to your doctor. And sometimes the doctor will be able to reassure you without even having to resort to a monitor. So let me tell you this, um, <clears throat> and I hope this will make uh, things easier. What is a heart palpitation? A heart palpitation is a symptom. It's something you complain of. It's a bit like saying, it's, it's, it's a symptom like pain. You know, you go to your doctor saying, uh, I'm getting pain. The doctor won't say you're getting pain. So a heart palpitation is a symptom which is subjective to you. All right. And no one can say to you, oh, no, what you're getting is not a heart palpitation. If it is something that you experience where you become aware of your heartbeat to the extent that it feels abnormal to you, then that is a heart palpitation. That could be just being aware of your heart beating harder. It may be aware of your heart skipping beats. It may be um, uh, an awareness of your heart beating irregularly. It may be an awareness of your heart beating fast. If it feels abnormal to you, then that is a heart palpitation in a very simplistic sense. Now, when you, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the first thing, if you are ever experiencing heart palpitations is that you should try and feel your pulse when you're ex experiencing them, all right? Now, I'll show you how to feel the pulse. Uh, the best way is, most of us have a little Adam's apple here, okay? And if you just go to the side of that and push in, not too hard, and just hold there, you will feel a pulse, okay? Now, the pulse has two characteristics. It has a rate and it has a rhythm, okay? Now, the rate can be normal or abnormal, and the rhythm can be regular or irregular. So all palpitations can only fall into one of four categories. Normal rate, regular rhythm, abnormal rate, regular rhythm, normal rate, irregular rhythm, abnormal rate, irregular rhythm. Okay. So all palpitations will fall into one of these four categories. Let's go through each of them so that you understand. Okay, what is a normal rate? A normal rate is a rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute. But actually, um, it, truthfully, a rate between 40 to 120 is acceptable and can be classified as normal, all right? So, 
Let's say you're getting palpitations. You feel your pulse. The first thing you want to work out is what the rate is. Okay. If your heart rate is between 40 and 120 beats per minute, or less than 40 to, yeah, 40 to 120 beats per minute, then you call that a normal rate. And then you feel the rhythm. Okay. And if it feels regular, then that falls into a normal rate, normal rhythm, palpitation. What causes normal rate, normal rhythm palpitations? Uh, normal rate, normal rhythm palpitations are generally not a heart rhythm disturbance. It's something else that's causing you to feel those, um, <clears throat> feel your heartbeat as palpitations. So, for example, if you get stressed all of a sudden, that will feel abnormal, but actually when you feel it, it will be normal rate, normal rhythm. If you're watching a scary movie and uh, you suddenly get scared, you will feel your heart pounding, it'll pound really hard. But if the rate is normal and the rhythm is normal, then that is most likely just because of fear or anxiety or stress, fever, things like that. Sometimes thyroid problems can do that. Something, you know, uh, but, but it, it does not reflect a heart rhythm disturbance. All right. What about if you have normal rate, irregular rhythm? Okay, there are only two possibilities. Normal rate, irregular rhythm, two possibilities. One, ectopic heartbeats, two, atrial fibrillation. And there's a difference. Atrial fibrillation will feel like this. Completely, completely irregular, completely irregular rhythm, okay? Irregularly irregular, no pattern to it. The rate may not be very fast, it may be 120, it may be 110, it may even be 70, but there's no, no pattern, it's, it's irregular. Of course, sometimes you can get this kind of irregularity, which is again, another type of normal rate, irregular rhythm, which is due to ectopic heartbeats, okay? And this can be a combination of different types. It could be like this, Or it could be. The difference is that in ectopics, it doesn't really matter whether it's one missed beat followed by a thud or a little flutter or two or three flutters or a thud followed by a missed beat. Uh, the, there are normal, regular beats interspersed. So you will get some regular beats and then you will get something funny go on and then you'll get normal beats. All right? And you'll get something funny go on and you'll get normal beats. With atrial fibrillation, it, there are no normal beats. So you'll just get... Okay? So that's the difference. But there are only two types of heart rhythm disturbance which will give you a normal heart rate but an irregular rhythm. And if it is sustained and completely irregular, it's likely to be atrial fibrillation. If there are some normal beats and then you get some kind of irregularity, then that's a lot more likely to be ectopic heartbeats. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, so that is the second category. Then we come to abnormal rate, normal rhythm. All right, now that means that the heart is going fast, but the rhythm is normal. So... Here we go. Uh, the heart rate is going fast, but the rhythm is regular. The rhythm is regular. Okay. So what could those be? That could be something called sinus tachycardia, which is just a fast heart rate, again, brought about by adrenaline. So for example, you're walking along in the middle of the night and suddenly uh, someone jumps out at you, your heart will go fast, but it will be completely regular. Okay. But there are other heart rhythm disturbances which can also cause this kind of pattern, which are things like an SVT, a supraventricular tachycardia, or even ventricular tachycardia will present like this. SVT, VT, um, atrial tachycardia, all of them will be regular rhythm, fast heart rate, over 120 beats per minute. Okay, so how do you distinguish between 
sinus tachycardia, which is, you know, fear, anxiety, adrenaline, etc., or a heart rhythm disturbance like an SVT or, a, or VT or anything like that. Well, if it's sinus tachycardia, what you will usually find is you have to go to how it starts and how it finishes. If it comes on like a light switch, all right, so it's like your heart rate's going like this, and if it suddenly goes boom, 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 and then out, okay, that's more likely to be a heart rhythm disturbance like a supraventricular tachycardia or ventricular tachycardia. Now, I'm mentioning ventricular tachycardia for the sake of completeness, but it's very unusual in, um, <laughs> to have ventricular tachycardia, uh, particularly if you don't have any underlying heart disease, whereas supraventricular tachycardias do tend to occur in younger people, but when they come on, they are literally like a light switch. So your heart is going bang, And then when you come out of it, bang. Sinus tachycardia, which is because of fear, anxiety, stress, that kind of thing, will generally come on more gradually. So it'll start off, and then it will go off, die away. And that's why it's really important when you have this um, normal, <coughs> um, uh, sorry, regular rhythm, um, fast heart rate, to pay attention to how it starts and how it finishes. If it starts suddenly and finishes suddenly, it's more likely to be a heart rhythm disturbance. If it starts gradually or uh, finishes gradually, then it's much more likely just to be sinus tachycardia, which is not a heart rhythm disturbance. Your heart is doing something completely normal, but something else is telling it to go faster. All right. Thyroid dysfunction would also cause this kind of pattern. Fever would cause this pattern. Being scared would cause this pattern, but an SVT, atrial tachycardia, atrial flutter, ventricular tachycardia will also cause this pattern. And then finally, there is um, <clears throat> irregular rhythm, abnormal heart rate, okay? That's the final uh, category. That is atrial fibrillation. So if the heart is going fast and the rhythm is abnormal, then that is highly, highly likely to be atrial fibrillation and nothing else, uh, okay? so. If you pay attention to uh, the nature of your heart rhythm disturbance, and if you can divide them into one of these four categories, it'll put your mind at considerable ease. None of them are hugely dangerous, all right? Particularly if you don't have any heart rhythm, uh, sorry, if you, if you have a structurally normal heart, if you've not been born with a heart problem, if you've never had major heart attacks or heart failure, none of these are gonna be hugely dangerous. Uh, but it is worth paying attention to these whilst you're waiting to seek help or get diagnosed because by uh, describing them and by fitting them in one of these four categories, it'll relieve your mind and you'll know exactly what it is. Uh, and particularly if it is things like, um, you know, normal rate, normal rhythm, normal rate, regular rhythm, you can feel pretty confident that this is likely just to be anxiety induced. Um, and if it's, again, if it's, uh, fast rate, normal rhythm or regular rhythm, and if, if it's gradual onset, gradual offset, very, very unlikely to be a heart rhythm disturbance. The only heart rhythm disturbances you need to worry about, and not even worry about, but which are heart rhythm disturbances are atrial fibrillation, which is generally fast and completely irregular, or sometimes SVTs, etc., which are sudden onset, fast, regular, sudden offset. All right, so I hope this was useful. I thought it would be quite useful just to try and show you that there are only four different types of palpitations. And if you actually think of it that way, it'll help you uh, define them better in your own mind. And if you can define them better in your own mind, then it'll help you work out what these could be and what these are very, very unlikely to be, all right? If your heart rhythm is regular, you're not going to have atrial fibrillation. It's not atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation, by definition, is irregular. All right. If your heart rhythm is irregular, then it's highly, highly unlikely that you're going to be having an SVT, AVNRT, VT, those things. All right. If your rate is normal and your rhythm is normal, it's highly, highly unlikely that you're going to have a heart rhythm disorder in the first place. It may just be anxiety, etc. So 
if you get these palpitations, try and do this and it'll make um, some of the anxiety that they generate lo a lot less. So I hope this was useful. I will try and do some more videos. I just wanted to keep do this quick one today and I'll try and do another one on um, Saturday. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the lovely words. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your comments. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it. Please consider subscribing to it. Um, and if you have any friends who may be interested, please consider telling them about it. The great news is either they'll get interested or I'll bore them to sleep. Either way, they can't lose. All right. Excellent. Bye.